What's up, freaks? Welcome to Steve Knows episode number three. This is a Steve Knows is a live show on how to have a no excuses business mindset, guiding you to better leadership, communication, teamwork, and problem solving so you can make more money with the strategy and structure to operate, to dominate on the battlefield of business. This is what it's all about. We do a different live show each week, sometimes in the mind, sometimes in the body. On Mondays, it's all about freaking business, making more money, growing and scaling your business. This is really a show for business owners, executives, managers, entrepreneurs, and their teams that need some leveling up or maybe even struggling with their the, the development, teaching, and training of their your team. We will guide you on how to become even better leaders, better communicators, better problem solvers, so that your team will be prepared for the battlefield of business and begin treating the business as if it's their own. Got you on multiple screens here, so I'm looking all over the different cameras. And you want your team to start treating the business as if it's their own so you can focus on the growth and scale of the company. We are helping companies, owners, teams, and managers, again, with that leadership, teamwork, communication, and problem solving in this highly immersive, developmental way without deviating from their mission and culture. Building your team for the battlefield of business, and that's exactly what today's show is all about. How to build your team for the battlefield of business, and that all starts with your hiring process. We're going to start about the hiring process. What's up, Bill Miller over on the Facebook, talking about team building and hiring and interviewing. You might want to stay tuned for the the awesome business and company that you're starting over there on the East Coast. Mind zero, freaking exciting stuff over there. So, This is all about hiring the right person for the right position, the right fit for the right position and the right person, the right personality, the right character, and actually how to go through that hiring process. And let me tell you, this all starts with with clear recruiting and always recruiting. You need to always be recruiting, always be recruiting, even when you think you have all the positions filled, especially if you're in a service-based business where you have operators that are operating and delivering a service on a daily basis in a physical location, in a storefront, there's a there's a, a turnover rate in, in that type of industry on a regular basis. It's just the way it is. It's the nature of the beast. It's part of the game. And really, if you're doing your job, you're going to have some turnover. You're going to develop people to a certain level and elevate certain ones. But other ones, you're going to be that stepping stone. You're going to be that leader, that coach, that guy, that mentor that helps them get to the next level in their life. So if you do things the right way, even when you do part ways with people, it's on good terms because you help them go to the next fucking level. And, and that's the way you want to think about it, not by, by uh, burning bridges or, or leaving on bad terms. So this all starts with the recruiting process. Like you need a system in recruiting. You need a system in interviewing, in hiring, in onboarding. And we're specifically going to go lay a, a real granular approach on the hiring process today. But you do also need to worry about recruiting and onboarding on the bookends of that hiring. We're going to touch on the, the, the recruiting here in a second. But You need to be so crystal clear of what it's like to fucking work for you and your company and what your company culture is all about. What makes you different and better? Like we've talked about on previous weeks of Steve Knows. If you see, there's been a kind of a trend here and it's almost like a business course here. If you follow just what we go over here on Steve Knows and this free fucking show, you could literally turn a a company into a million dollar business in a matter of a a few months. If you just implement like laser beam focus and, and, and just implement like a motherfucker, you could do that. Guarantee it. It's just the way it is. So you need to have a, a recruiting process and you need to always be recruiting. Even when you think you have all your seats filled. Listen, when it comes down to it, I'd rather have an empty empty seat in the business than a pile of shit keeping that seat warm. That's just, that, that's just me. And that's really the way you should be thinking too. You're not going to keep someone there just to have a seat filled because you don't want to have to do something yourself. If they are not a good culture fit, if they're just a piece of shit, unfortunately, they got to go. So when you are looking for that person, it all starts with your recruiting, your recruiting efforts. And it has to be like when, when I was recruiting for gyms in New York and looking for team members, it, it had to be like pretty direct and straightforward to know about the culture. And we've talked about core values on previous shows of Steve Knows. We've talked about unique values on previous shows. So that's going to be in your recruiting. That's going to be in your messaging, the way you talk, the way you reach out to those to those candidates for these positions. And you have we have to be very clear. Are you who are you what kind of type of person are you looking for? Like we were looking for extremely high energy, 
free, friendly, motivating, passionate people, uh, people who are just going to bring the fucking fire every second of every second. Like, that's what we were looking for. People who are passionate about helping others and changing lives and transforming other people's lives through fitness and weight loss and, uh, on their health journey. And letting people know what is, the, what is going to be included in the job. What are you going to be expected to do? Like, what is going to be the, the internal benefits that you're going to have for this job? Like, you, in, in the fitness industry, we'd be telling them, you will be changing people's lives in our high-energy, fun-filled, peak freak gym environment and we would provide all the training that was needed so it was more about finding the right culture fit and teaching the skills yeah you want some high skills you definitely want to hire for some skill but they need to have the skill and the will and do you have an internship program you need to have an in-house internship program where you could possibly get multiple people to come and work for free to start as an internship program and you keep the best ones and you keep them on and you get them onto your actual staff. Like you can get that through college programs or just out there in regular on, on social media. So anyone that's looking to get into that industry, looking for a career, looking for a long term career, you can have a, a train. We would have a trainer internship program. And we were looking, we would say we're looking for additional fitness professionals to add to our team that are results driven full of energy, want to work in an emerging, fast-paced, local fitness business. Like, this is pretty clear, straightforward, the type of person. Like, you know whether or not that that's you. You know it. And in addition, we'd, we'd say we were looking for hungry, educated, motivated, disciplined, and disciplined would be in fucking capital letters, and loyal coaches to be part of our team. And someone reading this is like, wow, that's a, a tall task. That's a tall order that we're asking for. Fuck yeah, it is. Because that's what's going to make us become that million-dollar business that I said. If you just follow these steps, you will become a million-dollar company. And there, and then have some details about what, what is expected on scheduling maybe in your ads. Because you, you should have ads on social media, on ZipRecruiter and whatever other sites for, for hiring, LinkedIn, all that stuff. And... It was, we would put in there the expectations on scheduling. What else could they might be uh, looking forward to on scheduling? There was openings in AM, PM, and on weekends, part-time only, but room to go into full-time or full-time positions of belt, whatever it is. Whatever it is, details about the positions that you're looking for. And it would close out with saying, if you are ready to meet our high standards and expectations, then email at this whatever address below. You must be ready to go out and take action and make it happen. If you think this sounds like you, if you fit this description, if what I just mentioned is you and your character, then send in your re a reply, send in your resume, set up an interview. If not, don't, don't waste our fucking time. Like basically that's what it's saying. And, and, and that was a pretty clear description. That was, and that was just for a either a front desk person like that. That's how direct and specific you need to be when you're, when you're looking for these people. And that, that was just one example of one ad we have, and we're talking about the recruiting side. We'll get to the interviewing side after this. But that, that was pretty clear and direct about the type of person, the type of character, the type of traits that are needed just for entry. Like, there's certain things that we are not going to teach you. We'll teach you the, the specifics of the job, but you need to start with the fucking attitude, positive attitude, Maximum effort with high energy, focus, discipline. Discipline could be taught a little bit. Some people don't really know what discipline is. But that those are just the prerequisites to even get a fucking... To even submit your resume. Like, if those don't apply, don't even bother submitting your resume. I'm not going to cheat you how to be a good person. I can't teach you how to have uh, uh, enthusiasm in your bones. I mean, you can that a little bit. You can maybe extract that out of people and inspire people to do that. But... You get the point. It, it's got to be in there already. Other ones were more kind of inquisitive, more more getting them to think about a, a future or a career, like question-based recruiting, like asking something like, have you ever wondered what a, a personal trainer or a boot camp or a boxing instructor fitness career looks like? Something like that. Are you passionate about fitness and curious to know if this would be a, a good career for you. And, you know, just like anything in life, change is scary. Starting a new job is scary. You have to make this clear and comfortable for them. 
and, and let them know what it's like. Let them know what it's going to be like to work for you. If you're a, a, the type of leadership, the type of management that you have, make it be known. Make it be clear. And, and put that out there in your recruiting. And these are just some examples that I, that I was going through. Another, another example could be another question base. Do you want to start a career? At, do you want to start a successful fitness professional career? If so, here's what you need to know. And this is just giving you an example of recruiting. You take this and you translate it into your own business. But this is how you need to talk. And this is how you need to present it in videos, in recruiting, in phone calls, in your posts and messages. And you should do some, you should be having some paid advertising of recruiting. You should be always fucking recruiting. Listen, if your business is filled with sixes and sevens, those could always be placed with sevens and eights. Eights and nines could always be placed with motherfucking tens. That's just the way it is. When it came to talking about these fitness coaches we were looking for, we'd be saying the best coaches are fanatical self-studies and always learning new things. They're either they're, they're outgoing and highly energetic, but also passionately humble and, and convey a strong sense of empathy. Either way, they are adept at connecting one-on-one or in groups, making people feel comfortable enough to trust them and to turn to them for support. Like now we're starting to get at some real e- e- emotional specific type of characteristics, types of personalities that we need. These are all just, ba- I'm just giving you bits and pieces of different ads we've used in recruiting. So you can get an idea of how you need to talk about your business. And you just translate this methodology and this way of, of thinking and operating to get your mess across about who the fuck you are, what, what you're looking for, and who you're not looking for. So you could weed out the bullshit. Weed out the fucking losers is what you need to do. And... When it comes to coaching, make it known. We made it known. that You're not just coming here to, to, to train a session and disappear. Like the best coaches realize the real job is outside of the training session. It's in the planning, the learning, the encouraging, the following up that inspires their clients to modify their behaviors in the other 23 hours a day they're not here in the studio. The most successful trainers make their clients feel as though their trainer is always available, but know that, that after an impression is established, the client won't really need them that much if you're doing your fucking job. So you offer it there, but they won't need it if you're doing your fucking job. But making it known, like there's a lot more to this than just coming in, telling people to do a couple of push-ups and bouncing. Fuck no. A whole shitload more goes into it than that when, when you're doing coaching, if you're looking for it, whatever. And then talking about the long term, giving, giving a, a visualization of the possibilities Give them the, the, the idea of opportunities that are available in the future. Possibilities of the future. Like, what does it look like long-term? What does a career working for you look like long-term? Let them know you're looking for some long-term people with room for growth, with opportunities, with massive fucking possibilities for growth and personal development. And, and that's the angle you need to be thinking about when you're recruiting for your business. Now, that's just the recruiting side. Now, that could have been a whole... We could just do a whole episode on just recruiting, but I wanted to also get into... Hiring also, which, which kind of ties in together because once you have them there in the business, like you need to make sure, all right, uh, th- th- that they have the absolute passion for what you're doing. So for fitness, the fitness world or, or even coaching world, absolute passion for health and fitness and helping people become the best versions of themselves. You need to have energy, enthusiasm, a positive mindset and a can-do attitude. These are motherfucking musts. And if, if there might even be some of these that add in some off language to let them know this is the type of, of business that we run. This is our culture. Talked about core values maybe three weeks ago here on Steve Knows and how our first core value was bring the fucking fire every second of every second. And that's on a big banner when you walk right through the door. The fucking is, is, is edited with a little at sign or whatever so it's slightly modified. But that's like the price of admission. And we would send the core values to any candidate and it was on every, uh, the zip recruiter or wherever you're doing for, for recruiting, whatever the other one is. I forget the other one uh, where, you, where you hire people from, whatever it is. There's all kinds of stuff. Also on social media, you hire on the job section of Facebook, of LinkedIn. You do, should be doing paid again. But that's right there. And we'd ask them, did you read the core values? And I would ask them, or I wouldn't ask, whoever was calling them on their first call would ask them on that first phone call before they even got it to an in-person interview. And this is all part of the recruiting process is, what do you think about those core values? What do you think about them? They, well, I thought they were a little rough, a little bold. It's like, you're probably not a good motherfucking fit for this company then. 
if you can't resonate with them, if the way that we're speaking doesn't resonate with you, probably not even a good fit. We shouldn't even get to the interview process. See, this is all just recruiting to get someone into an interview, which we'll go over again in, in the future on the actual questions to ask, the full interview process. Listen, the interview process could be a full two-day course we could do on how to, how, to, how to hire, not just interviewing, hiring and onboarding. It could be a full two-day course talking about recruiting, interviewing, hiring, and onboarding and training. That's, these are all some massive tasks that you need to do that you need to take your time on. That's where we're starting. We're just recruiting. We're going to build this up week by week, every week here on Steve Knows. And make it clear in the fucking recruiting about what you're about, what your company's about, what's expected of them. What are the, some of the, and then you can also list some of the tasks that they're, they're going to need to do, some of the basic day-to-day stuff about what they should expect in the business, what they should expect working for you, working with your clients, and make it known that, like for us, it was this is so much more than just a gym. And you need to know this. You need to be so crystal, crystal clear on this that this is so much more. Our coaches are much more than just trainers. We do a lot more than just train people. We coach them not just in fitness but in, and in nutrition, but in fucking life. This is a personal development program as much as it's a fitness and weight loss program. This is how deep we'd go into the recruiting. Because if you think you're just going to be a trainer and count some motherfucking reps and hold a little stopwatch like some some amateur hour, that shit ain't going to cut it. This is some next level stuff, which is what allowed us to turn it into a seven-figure business in like 1,800 square feet of usable space in a small town outside of New York City. So this is how you need to think about recruiting. And you need to be always recruiting. And you need to have a process for recruiting. And think, in every position in your job, it's, it's an old military saying, two is one and one is none. You need to have a backup to the backup. Every position, you need to make sure you have a backup plan for that position in place. You can't wait until it's too late to start filling in those slots. Always recruiting. Always have backup hand in place. Someone that could jump into that spot at a moment's notice. One person Her position is not enough. There needs to be someone else who's cross-trained in certain areas that could step in and carry that load until you get have the time to to, to fill in that spot, which is why as you're recruiting, and even if you think you're totally filled and you have two people for every position and you're totally filled up, you don't stop fucking recruiting. You still keep the dialogue going. You still keep your list of potential hires that you might talk to in the past and in the future. And you keep those relationships going. You keep that conversation going. So when it's time to jump in, you're already one or two steps into the process. You don't have to wait and start from scratch. You need to have a a recruiting process, have a hiring process, have an onboarding process. When a position is empty, obviously you need to get more aggressive with stuff and and posting and, and bump up your budget for hiring. But when it's not, you need to still have that drip campaign, just like any, like a marketing campaign. You need to think of recruiting as a fucking marketing campaign. When you're filled up and stocked and you have every position filled and a backup for every position in some way or another, whether that's a manager who is the, the stopgap and, and can plug in the holes as needed if, if one position falls out or someone turns into a, goes lame, turns into a fucking turd. Once you have all the backups, then you can put those recruiting campaigns on a kind of a drip where it's you know a, a post every month or two weeks or whatever. Your budget on the zip recruiters can be brought brought down, but there's times you're starting to grow and scale, open up multiple locations, hiring, growing, it's fucking exploding. Then you need to kind of get aggressive with that, a little more aggressive. Bump up that budget on the stuff, uh, on these. But always recruiting. When a position is filled, still up check in and, and keep those. You should always have players in the bullpen ready to jump in when the coach calls on them. And check in on those people every month. Stay in contact. Keep that dialogue going. And keep the regular posts going on social media. Keep the the advertisements, whatever the hell you want to call them, on all the LinkedIns and the zip recruiters and all those other other places. Update the positions that are available, what you're looking for. Keep it fresh. Keep your content fresh as you're evolving as a business, as an owner, as an entrepreneur, as a motherfucking leader, as a person. Let that show, let that light be shining on your your recruiting process and the way you're hunting, hunting for the best motherfucking talent out there. 
And no one says you can't get great talent from other places, from other companies. Like I've, I've been in stores where someone was just fucking awesome customer service and I got their contact information. Whether or not they were looking for a new job at that point, I got their name, their phone number, and the email said, you got to give this to me and I, I, I might have some, so we can maybe do some work together in the future. And it, it, it basically meant, yeah, you're going to fucking sometimes poach some quality talent. And that's what you need to think of them as fucking talent. Quality talent that you could plug into your system, into your business when it's time for you to grow and scale. You might not even have a, a spot to plug in, but you don't have a spot to plug in until you have a spot to plug in. There's not a problem until there's a problem. There's not a gap until there's a fucking gap. There's not mold until there's motherfucking mold. It's a saying I use. There's not mold until there's mold. I was one time renting a house in, in New York and moved in seven, eight months later. There's mold all over inside the, the, the and it was at a, like a, a house that had like a hill above it and whenever it rained water would come down the ground on the the yard would get like a little not flooded but just very damp and swampy so in some of the closets obviously it was coming up from under the ground some shit would get molded landlord said well there wasn't mold here before well first of all i'm sure there was but second of all motherfucker there's not mold to this mold there is now there wasn't before what the fuck's that got to do with now i didn't bring the mold i didn't bring the rain down from your hill there's obviously something wrong with the filtration system or something so you don't have a a hole in your staffing until you have a hole in your staffing and if you wait until you have a hole to start thinking about stopping and filling in the hole then you're going to be fucked then you're going to be doing everything yourself then you're going to be back down the weeds and stuck in the weeds yourself as the manager the leader the owner the entrepreneur whatever the hell you are and you're not gonna be able to think about the high level big picture shit you should be doing to grow and scale a business. You're going to be stuck in the day-to-day processes. And let me tell you, sometimes you got to do that shit. Sometimes that's just the way it is. You got to get down to the weeds. You got to get some dirt under your fingernails, carry the load on your shoulders. And you should be doing that on a periodic basis, even when all positions are filled. Get in there and show you're willing, capable, and have the skill and the will to do it. And that is some stuff you need to, to think about when you're recruiting as you're looking at and getting the feel and the vibe before you can get to the interview process we'll get to that i guess we'll get to the interview process next week it'll be perfect timing perfect setup for this but let it be known what it's like to work for you if you're a wild crazy off the wall motherfucker like let that be known like you need personalities that can deal with that but you also might need some personalities that can counterbalance that and tame that and 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 mesh with that a little bit some of the skills and talents that you're not good at those are the motherfuckers you need to be hiring and you need to subdue your ego to be able to deal with those ones that can maybe reel you in a little bit. If you're one of those high as a kite, fucking all over the place, idea fairy, running off in directions, unorganized, you might need that. And when you're doing this recruiting process, you got to be thinking about, all right, skill versus will. Do they have the skill? Do they have the will? Then you need to be thinking about passion versus proficiency. Do they have passion and proficiency? Which one? Both? None? One or the other? Depends. Aptitude versus attitude. You need to hire for culture and attitude. Are they a skill fit or a culture fit or both? Like this, we need to think about. This is stuff you're going to discover. And as you're recruiting, start asking yourselves these questions. As you go into the interview process, you'll start discovering this stuff. And as you get to know them, knowing, as you get to know them and and realize, all right, is this person going to be good for this business or are they going to be a fucking cancer? You might have people in your business right now that are fucking awesome, high-level skills, but just a, 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 a douchebag, just cancerous. Like, I don't care how much money you're making. If you're fucking cancerous to the team and dragging down the team and just rude, fucking obnoxious and not fitting in with the team, motherfucker, you gotta go. You gotta go. We gotta part ways. I'd rather have an empty seat than, than a pile of shit sitting in the seat. I told you that already, keeping it warm. That's just the way it is. Do they have the, the, the culture and the skills? Do they have the passion and the proficiency? Now, if they have the proficiency, but not the passion, that's actually a problem. That's like a living hell. Imagine being really good at something. You have the proficiency for it, so you're stuck doing it, but you fucking hate doing it. You got zero passion. That's a miserable fucking spot to be in. Think about that. To be stuck doing something just because you're good at it. Now, there's a time you have to deal with that. But imagine the flip side. If you were doing something that you were fucking so passionate about and loved doing, and your proficiency wasn't there. It was a little low. So you have that passion, but low proficiency. So you like doing it, but you're not good at it. There's a good chance, since you have so much fucking passion for it, you will be motivated and do the due diligence and work 
on your time off and not be asking like a fucking douchebag, am I going to get paid for that? And you would learn it and level up those skills. What makes you then go in a different quadrant of having the passion and proficiency together. And if you have the passion for it and not, not good at it, and you work for it and you hustle and you, you bust your ass and you still don't get good at it, all right, now you know. Time to move on to something else. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Find a different position. Find a different thing that works for you. I want time. Here's a quick story. This is fucking funny. This is fucking funny. We used to have team dinners, right? Where we'd go out to a nice restaurant, eat whatever, order whatever you want, eat whatever you want, drink it up. And we're talking about a bill that would come out to, I don't even know, it doesn't matter how much, either several hundreds or into the thousand, you know, over a thousand dollars for a team, depending on a couple, sometimes a big team, this shit could add up. They start talking about adding drinks and dinners and desserts and people ordering double shit to take home to go, like some funny shit out there. But here's the thing. So there was one time in one of my businesses, and you know, we don't talk about specifics or names or whatever because... We, we have the saying around here, snitches end up in ditches, right? So there was a fucking time that I was doing a, a staff dinner at a real nice restaurant on a whatever Friday evening or whatever it is. After a, a work event we did, we're going to go meet and unwind for some dinner and some drinks. I had a, an employee who had the motherfucking nerve to ask, are we going to get paid for that? <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding? We've also had employees ask, are we going to get paid to show up to a party? No, motherfucker. You don't want to come to dinner. Don't come to dinner. No one's going to force you. It's not mandatory. Don't show up to a dinner. But you're not going to get fucking paid. Get paid to come to a motherfucking dinner or to a party or a team building event. Now, there's certain things where if it's mandatory, a staff meeting or maybe certain team building events, if it's mandatory, then you do you would get paid for. But to come to a dinner, a team dinner to ask to have the motherfucking audacity and the, the I don't even know the fucking word for it, the non-comical fucking sense. It is fucking comical. I meant to say common sense, but I said comical because it is fucking comical. Imagine that shit. Fucking funny stuff that goes on, right? That's what that's the adventures of doing in the business world, adventures of of growing and learning and leading and making fucking money and making an impact. It's just the way it is. So anyway, get off track here as I'm getting worked up with some of these fucking stories. But this is the way you need to think about it when you're recruiting for your business. Now, next week, we'll talk about the hiring process, exactly what questions to ask in the different stages of the hiring process. So first off is this is the recruiting. Make it clear about just a quick recap, make it clear in your posts, in your hiring process, your ads, what you're looking for, make clear what it's like to work for you. Like I make it pretty clear how I operate and you see that here, this is what you fucking get. And this is, if, if you can't deal with that, that's all good. Doesn't mean you're good, not a good person. You just ain't gonna fucking be a good person here. It ain't gonna work here because we are fucking fast paced. We are attacking violently our tasks. So think about the skill versus the will. Think about the passion versus the proficiency, the aptitude versus the attitude, the, the, the skills versus the culture fit. Because motherfuckers can have, can come in with all the great skills in the world, but have horrible bad habits or horrible attitude or horrible culture. You're better off getting someone you can, that's moldable from scratch sometimes. And you're going to discover that stuff in the recruiting process, the way that you put your advertisements out there. Approach your recruiting like you do a high level marketing campaign, aggressively and violently, and you'll start getting better, at least a greater percentage of getting quality team members that are going to be a good fit for your team, for your culture, with the skills that you need. Anyway, we got to get rolling. This has been Steve Knows, episode number three. I will see you later. We'll be on tomorrow with Steve Says. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments about anything that we're talking about here, about the recruiting process, we'll go deep dive into the hiring process next week. If you have any questions on this, comments, suggestions, put them in the comment below or just send me a private message. If you need some additional higher level help with this and coaching, let me know. We'll talk about which coaching program would be the best for you, either one-on-one coaching or we also have team coaching where we actually could come out and coach up you and your entire team in person or online or maybe you just want some higher level one-on-one coaching for yourself, send me a private message. Let's talk about it and we will help you level up. We will help you to operate, to dominate in your business, help you to, to scale or fucking fail, to delegate 
and fucking elevate to let go and motherfucking grow your business. I will talk to you later in case no one told you yet today. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.